In this problem, we're given that we have a particle that's inside the quantum harmonic oscillator, and then we're told that it has an initial wave function that is equal to this expression. And what we want to find is the expected value of the energy levels. So this expression could be evaluated by considering this sum over here. So you take the constant Cn square and then multiply it by the energy levels. So this Cn would correspond to the Cn that you obtain through Fourier transform. So recall that you can express your initial wave function as a linear combination of the stationary states, and then uh, your Cn would be the same Cn that you have over here, which allows you to construct the uh, initial wave function. And your En would be your allowed energy levels, which for the quantum harmonic oscillator is equal to this expression. So in order to find the expected value of the energy levels, we need to find what Cn should be. So that, that means we need to find what the Cn should be that would allow us to reconstruct the initial wave function, which is given over here, using the uh, stationary states. So our goal here is to find Cn. Finding Cn would allow us to find the expected value of the energy levels. So before I do that, I'm going to express the initial wave function uh, in a slightly different way. I'm going to define y to be equal to the square root of m omega divided by h bar x, and I'm going to define alpha as being equal to m omega divided by h bar pi to the power of 1 fourth. So defining these two expressions here will simplify some of these expressions a bit. So expressing everything in terms of y, you will see that the initial wave function can now be expressed in such a way. So this whole term here becomes y. So I have 1 minus 2y squared. And then this term is just negative y squared over 2. So here, this is, now, this is now a function of y instead. So this is going to be the alternate expression for the initial wave function. And we know that we want to express the initial wave function as a linear combination of the stationary states. And then if you will take a look at the expressions of the first three stationary states, I'll write them out in terms of y and alpha. So you can go to the book and take a look at the formula uh, for these different stationary states, and you will see that the first three stationary states are given by these three expressions over here. So this is the first, this is the ground state, this is the first excited state, and this is the second one. And then by checking out the formula given in the book, and by considering the Hermite polynomials, you'll see that the first three stationary states are, uh, are given by these three expressions over here. And if you take a look at the initial wave function, so if you take a look at the initial wave function, you can see that we can actually break it down into something like this. I'm going to expand this term. So it gives me 1 minus 4y plus 4y squared times e to the power of negative y squared over 2. So you see that these terms over here, the coefficient, uh, the power of these terms, are from, we have a term that has a power of 0, we have a term that has a power of 1, and we have a term that has, has a power of 2. And so you can pretty much see that the initial wave function is actually just composed of a linear combination of these three states. All the subsequent states, there would be coefficients that would go on to 3 or 4 and so on. And you can see that if that is the case, we should have other terms uh, that ha have, uh, if, if the other stationary states are involved in constructing the linear combination of the initial wave function, you would expect there to be other higher powers here in this polynomial term. But since this polynomial term only reaches uh, the power of 2, we can pretty much guess that the initial wave function can actually be expressed as a linear combination of the first three stationary states, so the xi zero. So that is our goal over here. So we know, so by observing this expression and observing the expressions that the first three stationary states take on, we can deduce that your initial wave function is going to look something like this. And then for all the subsequent uh, constants, c3, c4, and c5, and so on, all of these subsequent constants would all be equal to zero. So in the end, you can see that for the Cn's over here, we only need to concern ourselves with Z0, C1, and C2. All the subsequent terms are all equal to zero. So our goal now is if we can find C0, C1, and C2, we can then take the absolute value squared to find the probability of obtaining the nth energy level, and then we can evaluate this expression to find the expected value of energy. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to try to find these three, uh, these three constants. And so we can do that by 
rearranging our initial wave function. So note you can see that our initial wave function is given by this expression. So I'm just gonna break everything, uh, break everything up first. I'm gonna expand the bracket. So we have four a y squared e to the power of negative y squared over two, and I'm gonna manipulate this these expressions so that I can express them in terms of xi xi not xi one and xi two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this term by alpha, and then I'm going to tack an alpha up here, so both of these they cancel out. So ultimately this change does not affect the value at all. And then you can see that this term over here, alpha times your e term, is actually just xi naught. And then I can do the same for this term over here. So you can see that we need an alpha times square root of 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this by alpha times the square root of 2, and then multiply this back by alpha times the square root of 2. And then you can see that these terms here would actually give us xi of 1. So this is actually xi of 1. And then I'm going to do something similar for this case. So here we have alpha divided by the square root of 2. So in that case, I'm going to give it an alpha divided by square root of 2. And then I need to cancel out these terms. So I have a square root of 2 divided by alpha to cancel uh, out this term. And you can see that here we have a 2y square. So I'm just going to absorb one of the 2s within this 4 over here. So this is going to become 2, and then the 2 will become absorbed inside. Uh, uh, it will be attached to, uh, to the y square. And for the apart from the y square term, there's also a minus 1. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to minus 1 and then plus 1 of e to the power of negative y square over 2. So here, this term, uh, I, I'm now going to express this in terms of xi naught. This term can now be expressed in terms of xi 1. And then this one requires a slight bit of additional work. So we have square root of 2 on the top. And they, I'm going to isolate these two terms first, 2y squared minus 1. It's going to attach itself to this term over here, uh, as, as well as attach itself to this constant. And then it's going to give us xi2. You can see that it matches this expression. So I'm going to get xi2. And for the other term, don't forget we still have a plus 1 over here. So I'm going to pull that out. So pulling this plus 1 out, we're going to get 2a times e to the power of negative y squared over 2. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing as we did over here. I'm going to divide this by alpha, and then tack on alpha over here. And you'll see that this is actually equal to xi naught. So in the end, you will see that our initial wave function is now equal to... So I'm going to combine this term with this term. So this is 2a divided by alpha, this is 1a divided by alpha. You combine them together, you get 3a divided by alpha times xi naught. So this is the first term, and the second term we have negative 4a divided by alpha times the square root of 2 times xi 1. And for the other term we have plus 2a square root of 2 divided by alpha times xi 2. And then actually we can actually uh, multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 2 and then you can see that the constant the coefficient can actually be expressed in such a way and you'll see that both of these are actually equal and then you can see that we have essentially obtained uh, the result that we wanted what we wanted to find was c not z1 c1 and c2 and you can see that we have essentially done the same uh, the exact uh, goal that we set out to achieve this is going to be c c c not c1 and c2 and then we still don't know what this a should be, but then we know that the initial wave function should be normalized. And then we know that the sum of these constants, which represent the probability of obtaining uh, the nth energy level, the sum of these probabilities should be equal to 1, because that's what probabilities are. You need to add them, add them up, and you should be able to get uh, 1 as your total. So that means c naught squared plus c1 squared plus c2 squared should be equal to 1. And that, that would allow us to deduce what this constant a should be. And you can, uh, by taking the square, you see that you get 9 times a squared divided by alpha squared. And then here you get 16 divided by 2, so that's just 8 times a squared divided by alpha squared. And this term is the exact same, so you get 8 times a squared divided by alpha squared. And this is going to be equal to 1. And you can see that you can combine these three terms. So 8 plus 8, that's 16, plus 9, that's 25. So we have 25 over a squared, over alpha squared times a squared is equal to 1. So this implies that a is equal to alpha over 5. So this is a very important result. So now using this, we are ready 
to find the expected value of the energy levels. So now that we know that A is equal to alpha divided by 5, we have essentially found our three constants. So let's just write them out. So C0 is equal to 3 divided by A, uh, 3 divided by alpha times A, so we just tack on alpha over 5, so this is actually equal to 3 over 5. And the same goes for C1, we have negative 4 divided by alpha square root of 2 times A, and then A is just equal to alpha over 5, so we do the same thing. So these alphas, they cancel out, we get negative 4 divided by 5 times the square root of 2. So this is C1. And then once again, we do the same thing for C2. You can see that C2 is the same as C1, except for the uh, different signs. So C2 is actually going to be equal to 4 divided by 5 times the square root of 2. So these are our three constants. And now we're ready to evaluate this expression over here, which is what we actually want. So looking, finding the expected value of the energy levels. We have Cn squared times En, and then we can now uh, evaluate this expression. First we have C0 squared, which is equal to 9 over 25, and this will be multiplied by the first energy level, which is equal to 1 half times h bar omega. So don't forget the formula for the nth energy level is given by this expression. So this is going to be the uh, C0 times uh, E0, and then the second term, C1 squared times E1, that's going to be the square of this term. So you're going to get 16 divided by 2, that's 8, and then divided by 5 squared, so that's 25, and that's more going to be multiplied by E1, the first, uh, the first excited uh, state. So that's going to be 3 over 2 h bar omega. And then you do the same thing for the second excited state. So once again you square this, you get 8 over 25, and you multiply this by E2, which you just substitute 2, so you get 5 over 2 h bar omega. And then you can uh, multiply these fractions together and then sum them up. And then in the end, you will see that your answer will be equal to 73 divided by 50 times h bar omega. And this is your answer. This is the expected value.